lot of jobs out there that are available. Yeah, there's a thing called the JOLTS report. Mm -hmm. Now we get the first Friday of the month employment report. We get all sorts of data, you know, ADP, new hiring, but there's a JOLTS report, which is job openings in America. Um, and it's something that also talks about turnover and people willing to quit, people um, who feel comfortable in their jobs. The layoffs and discharges fell to 1.1%. This is an indicator that Fed Chairman Janet Yellen really likes to take a look at. The pace of jobs growth has been solid in recent months. Um, it's a pulse on the market. Uh, Friday's jobs reports were a little less than expected, but that's going to be probably revised higher. Uh, the unemployment rate is at a seven-year low at 5.1%. The biggest laggard in all of these reports, though, even though we have jobs, even though uh, there's a lot of new openings out there that we will fill, is wage growth has been anemic. And uh, it's still a problem. That should happen soon. And when wage growth happens, uh, they'll sap a little bit of corporate uh, profits as far as margins go, and Wall Street won't like that. So this is all kind of part of a cycle, uh, but the jobs report, good today. Okay, we're watching Yahoo, big Bay Area company. They yeah. were down early trading and bounced back. So they got all these shares of Alibaba, right? Sure. And now, uh, do they have to pay taxes on them is the big question. And is there a decision, really, from the IRS and the SEC? I mean, they could be facing a $9 billion problem, right? It could be. <laughs> but we don't know. They don't know, do they? No one really likes Yahoo's core business. Okay. They like the fact that they own yeah. shares of Alibaba, which has recently seen China go into a tailspin, which Alibaba does business in China. Um, so you can see how this has been a bit of a problem. Yahoo stock is down 45%, 39% for the year, while the S&P 500 is just down a skosh. Uh, so you can see that they're not performing against the market, and Alibaba is really pulling Yahoo down at this point in time. Um, if, they get, if they don't get taxed, on the spinoff, it's going to be a $23.4 billion profit. If they do, it's going to lose about $9 billion. This is a pretty big problem. Um, Yahoo also in the news today as a marketing guy from NY University uh, referred to Marissa Meyer as the worst CEO wow. in history and says that she would have been fired already if she didn't have twins uh, coming. Uh, that seems Ouch. like a bit of a sexist remark yeah. to me. I mean, I'm offended by that remark, but uh, with that said, Yahoo's core business valued at nothing at wow. this point. Wow, and we know your offense bar is pretty high, Rob. So be offended by that. Now, I saw another analyst who put a target on Yahoo at 50. Is a $30 stock right now. Would you buy Yahoo shares at this point? If you think they're going to get that tax ruling in their favor, yeah, because um, that's all, you know, $15 billion roughly has been pulled out of the market cap because of that. People assume that they're going to get taxed. There is a precedent that they won't. TripAdvisor once was spun off, spun off from a company, and there was no tax consequences. So this probably won't have the tax consequences if we're looking at precedent. All right, so we know the Fed is going to raise interest rates off yep. of zero eventually. And that's been a lot of concern for the housing market because people worry that mortgage rates are going to go up. But uh, now some indication that even if the Fed raises rates, we may see mortgage rates stay low maybe? Yes, for about two years. Okay. Um, in large part, what we have is a world calamity. Uh, you know, China's stock market's going like this. World economies are struggling. So when there's struggle out there, investors say, I'm going to put money in the U.S. And they put it in our 10-year, our 20-year, our 30-year treasuries, um, our bond markets. Uh, and that helps keep rates low. Because there's market calamity in the world, that should trump the Federal Reserve raising interest rates. An economist out of, who was it today? Fannie Mae said that the 30-year the fixed mortgage rate should be about 4.3% at the end of 2016. So think about 15 months out, it might move one quarter of a percent from where it is today. Not too shabby. Uh, we're not making enough houses. The economy's doing well. The housing market still should continue to do pretty well for the next year and a half at least. So people looking to buy, people looking to refinance, does that give them a little more confidence that things are going to stay the way they are right now as far as mortgage rates? I think so. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I feel comfortable saying that out loud. Right, good. All right, Alan with a question. Uh, should I close old credit cards? It's always a question people ask. They're worried about getting a ding on their credit score for yeah. closing uh, long-standing accounts. When you typically close a long-standing account, it implies like you and I are closing our college credit cards, which we didn't have that much of a limit, so it doesn't ding as much as you think it would. If it was a card that had $10,000 on it, available credit versus 1000 thousand, is not going to make much difference. The reason you may want to keep it open, especially if you're going to be buying a house or a car, is if you've had a credit card for 10, 20 years from college, uh, 20 plus years for me from college, it's a 20-year-old account, and credit card companies like seeing, and credit companies like seeing that you ha have an account that you haven't missed or blown or, or messed up. I'm trying to think of a non-dirty word. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Payment is the best one. Uh, <laughs> so if you see that he hasn't gotten in trouble in 20 years, your credit score will actually go up. So 
It depends. I'd close the newer cards if you can versus the older ones. Okay, I know a lot of times if that card starts to get that annual fee, if you call and say you're going to cancel, they'll sometimes waive that annual fee at least for a year, maybe two. Everything is negotiable, okay. um, especially your, your cable bill. Um, every, really? Every one to two years, you should call your cable company and say, I'm thinking about quitting because uh, they're really? going to sign you up for some package. Yep. All right, good advice. Thanks. And thank you, Alan, for the question. And post your questions on Rob's Facebook page so we can answer them on the air here on Chrome 4. We'll be right back. Start here at 5 with...